Welcome to the Shreveport Connection. This is Tommy. And this video is on your SmackDown spoilers, your superstars. Well, uh, take the bank, not superstars, but WWE main event. And some brief news. And what happened after Monday Night Raw, thanks to JD Amato, who attended uh, Monday's Raw in Brooklyn, New York. And said the following notes on what happened after the show went off the air. John Cena defeated Ryback right in a tables match to retain the WWE title. Solid Raw hot crowd. Well, Barclays Center is beautiful. WWE is returning for a house show on September 8th in that arena. And David Velasaka passed the long word that the pre-sale for the September 8th live event starts. Started uh, on Monday night and ran, ran runs through Thursday at 10 p.m. Central Time with WWE Live as the, the pre-sale password. Once he heard the dark match with John Cena versus Ryback, my group and I left and headed towards the, the back of the arena where a small throng of uh, fans gathered. Josh Matthews took a dive and signed a few ticket stubs. Took a picture with a young fan and rushed back to his car. Michael Koloslav walked by along with JBL. They seemed to travel together. Interesting to note here, CM Punk walked right out of the arena into a, a yellow cab. AJ and Big E also departed in a yellow cab. A black jeep pulled out of the arena. Some of the fans said Brian, Brian hard to tell as uh, the windows were tinted. As the jeep pulled away, the passenger started a yes talk. Paul Heyman came, uh, came out to what appeared to be his two kids. The crowd booed the guy, but calmed down as there, there were children around him. The star of the night was Cody Rhodes. His car was near the crowd, and some kids uh, rushed to him. He signed ticket stubs, took pictures, and went into his car. Thus his face turned. I understand that these guys and gals had a rough night last night, uh, so I didn't uh, expect much. I really appreciated the little wave from John Cena and Randy Orton there and walked away toward, towards his bus. Seamus was about to taunt a fan, but didn't bother fueling the gasoline there. The crowd was hot inside and out. And for Charlotte, North Carolina, a judge has issued an arrest order for the former professional wrestling champion, Ric Flair, for not paying his estranged wife more than $32,000 in spousal support. The Charlotte Observer reported a player, whose real name is Richard Morgan Flyer, how it's spelled, was ordered to pay $4,000 a month to Jacqueline Beans, who filed a legal separation last summer. Court documents say Flair did, didn't pay $32,352.51 following two court orders. Documents say that the arrest order was issued on July 3rd, but Flair can avoid jail if he pays what he owes. Beans was charged Tuesday with making her harassing phone calls. She's accused of making a series of phone calls to Flair's girlfriend. Beans was released on a $500 unsecured bond, and her attorney calls the charges unfounded and outlandish. Of course, when you're, go when you're going through divorce and what have you. The dark match main event for the SmackDown taping was uh, Sheamus, Randy Orton, and Chris Jericho versus Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns in a six-man tag. <coughs> Bobby Lashley, a.k.a. Franklin Roberto Lashley, is 37 years old. Turned 37. He was born July 16, 1936. Lashley won two MMA fights in June. He defeated Kevin Esplund by submission at Titan FC on tw FC 25 on June 7th. Then defeated Matthew Larson by submission on June 29th at GWC, the British Invasion event. The late Terry Gordy of the Fabulous Three Birds claimed died on the, on that date, <laughs> July 16th. His death was uh, at the age of 40 was attributed to a heart attack caused by a blood clot. Gordy's son Ray worked for WWE as Jesse Slammaster J. I remain ho hopeful that this will be the year that WWE inducts the Freebirds into the WWE Hall of Fame. Bob Orton Sr. died on this date in 2006 at the age of 76 and suffering a series from so after sir suffering a series of heart attacks. The late pro wrestler is the father of Bob Orton Jr. and Barry O. 
of WWE fame. And he also has a da daughter, Rhonda. He is the grandfather of WWE star Randy Orton. The Viper. FSW ran in Mesquite, Nevada on July 13th with the following results. Kevin Nash defeated Tyson Prince by disqualification. John Morrison defeated Kenny King from TNA. Uh, Eugene, Leon Hader, and Greg Romero de defeated Vegas Originals. Sugar Brown and Seacow beat Willie Mack and Remy Marcel. Jack Manley fought Bryce Harrison to a no contest. Reno Scum defeated Rockness Monsters, Suburban Commandos, and Paul London and Brian Kendrick tagged again to retain the FCW, F, FW tag titles. Disco Inferno defeated Michael Modest. Alcatraz defeated Clutch and Bruce Harrison defeated Jeffy, Gregory Sharp, and Funny Bone in a No Limits title match. Watch us FSW online at, and I'll put the link here, YouTube.com, Future Stars Wrestling. And thanks to the results posted by Joe D. There, are, there were no pro wrestling shows, so listen for ESPN Classic on Tuesday night. Big Show will be returning on Monday Night Raw. Chris Jericho finished up with WWE for now at last, at last night's tapings. As he tweeted, so long to at WWE for now, 2013. Was one of my favorite in-ring years ever. Thanks for always sticking at Y2J. And see you on the road soon with at Fozzy Rock. WWE is reporting that Randy Orton suffered a cervical strain and cervical neuropraxia at last night's uh, SmackDown tapings. Orton tweeted this tweeted Wednesday morning. Hey, remember when I said I, I said don't listen to, to the net? I'm fine. Del Rio's kicks are hard as hell, and I caught one to the neck. Part of the job. A fan brought out how the story was reported by WWE's official website, and Orton replied, No, I mean every other site that runs the story and adds their two cents. When news leaked last week about the, of WWE's plan to do an angle where John Cena let the WWE fans pick Daniel Bryan as his SummerSlam opponent, the officials went, Ahead and did the angle on this week's Raw. It was re originally planned to happen a few weeks from now. Closer to when Total Diva there, the feeling at Raw was that they wanted to put the official SummerSlam main event out there as early as possible, and they, uh, they did it. The decision to have Randy Orton win the money, win in the in the bank, goes back two or three weeks. And the officials felt that they should do it. Because nobody would see an Orton win coming. One of the reasons Orton has lost a lot lately is because they felt they needed to bring him down to build him back up. Happy birthday goes to the former TNA. <coughs> and I, I take it back. That's not a birthday. Tara was recently uh, released from her t TNA contract. And you can uh, go to uh, impactwrestling.com to read all the releases this week. As uh, Tara was consistently a good worker for uh, TNA throughout her run with the company, she had been re relegated to uh, doing more as a second to Jesse than actual wrestling lately. At age 42, it will be interesting to see what her future plans are within the industry. She previously worked for WWE as Victoria. She currently owns the Square Circle Restaurant in Chicago. And I believe she still owns her... So does her little, uh, I don't know, the tattoo shop or whatever it was with titty windows. Drew Hankinson, who wrestled as Doc in TNA, announced that his contract with the company expired on July 12th. And as of this evening, uh, we have officially parted ways. He wrote twi on Twitter.com, backslash impact doc. Thanks to the .net reader, Agazi. Hankson also worked as Luke Gallows and Festus in WWE. He is a talented big man, and I never felt like TNA. Use him to the best of his abilities. One can only assume that this is another case of TNA trimming expenses. I mean, they should have uh, at least let him uh, work out the uh, deal with Ace and Lacey. I actually kick him out, because that's what he was doing lately. 
The restructuring with T within TNA has led to a number of wrestlers being released from the contract or the company allowing talent contracts to expire. It is also affecting the office side of the company. Multiple sources report that Bruce Richard Sr., the Vice President of Programming and Talent Relations, who is also among the office personnel, asked to restructure the deal. Pritchard is said to have been, uh, rejected that request and is believing that his days with TNAs are coming to an end and barring an unexpected twist, he has been also released. Meanwhile, uh, other TNA agents were also asked to restructure their deal to a per night agreement. The word in TNA is that D'Lo Brown has agreed to the per night agreement recently only to be fired by the company shortly thereafter. An attempt to reach Brown for a comment on his status was not successful. TNA officials have been restructuring the company, which is why several talents have been released on the contract that, expi that have expired lately. And this has also led to changes at departures in TNA offices. <clears throat> Take a copy of this twice and reworded it. Uh, okay, in regards to WWE creatively leaks that Dead Spin wrote about yesterday, WWE released the following statement. We may have a modern day Nostradamus on our hands. We might have to monitor these posts in advance to, of our next pay per view to see how good he or she really is. Roddy Piper made a guest appearance on the Biographies channel, The Hunting of, this past Saturday night. During this episode, Piper said that he discovered the ghost of Adrian Adonis. Psychic medium Kim Russo also said that she, she was getting massage messages from different spirits around Piper. One of them, she said, was a man whose name had a strong O who came from a big family and who had died from a height, hinting at Owen Hart. Kim also claims to have been, have seen the spirit of Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning. And I'm um, posting a link right here of Stone Cold's appearance on The Voice with Michael Chiavello. And footage of WWE Champion John Cena's appearance yesterday live with Kelly. And Michael can be also seen at this link. Dustin Gold, Goldust Rhodes will appear at MMA Unleashed 2 at the Melbourne Auditorium in Melbourne, Florida on Saturday, July 27th. Stone Cold noted on Twitter that he had a meeting today for a new movie as he tweeted. Headed into a meeting for a bust-ass kill, kill em all action movie this summer. Gonna be some catty wumpus ass, ass, ass whoopers on this some bitch. And Zack Zimmerman is at the SmackDown tapings in Providence, Rhode Island, and is planning, has set the update uh, for the main event taping. Dark match. Sankara defeated Ted DiBiase Jr. And Sankara won with a senton bomb in about a five-minute match. And the main event taping showed Christian defeating Fountain Dango. Christian went over with a roll-up in about eight minutes. Match number two, Layla and Natalya. De, uh, defeated Alicia Fox and Oksana. The baby faces were duo one in about a five minute basic Divas uh, match. Justin Gabriel in match number three defeated Heath one man band Slater with uh, Drew McIntyre and Mahal in the corner. Well, it, it actually uh, ended in a no contest with the Wyatt family attack. A uh, great reaction and the Wyatt's laid out all four guys and stacked the bodies in front of Bray as they cut, as they cut the promo. Usual great stuff from the act. The crowd was receptive and gave him a big applause when the lights came back on after the end of the segment. And the same person, Zach Zimmerman, was at SmackDown tapings again and posted the SmackDown. Spoilers. The building is packed, but it's not sold out. Like about seven, eight, four. Show open with Teddy Long in the ring. He announces that Mr. McMahon was in the building to give him a job evaluation. He asked if the crowd thought he should be the permanent GM. The crowd responded positively. He said, this would be the best SmackDown ever. 
Well, that is, he gets an interruption from Booker T's music. And he makes his return after his surgery and what have you. Booker thanked Teddy, but said he would be resuming that general manager duty. Inter another interruption by a basement man. Who said there could only be one? He asked what they have to offer. Teddy announces Curtis Axel versus Chris Jericho for the Intercontinental title. Booker announces Alberto Del Rio versus Ray New York. And a Brad Maddox, who said he already thought of those matches, and announces the SmackDown return of Rob Van Dam, Big Pop, and Vince T's all three, and announced that the new SmackDown general manager is none other than Vicky Guerrero. Let me tell you, Vicky Guerrero. And she is not fired from WAB, just moved over to SmackDown again. Uh, big heat. And no chance followed. Vicky cuts a promo on how she's back and she hates all of us. Which drew some major nuclear atom bomb heat. And Dolph Ziggler in the first match defeated Jack Swagger with Antonio Cesaro and Dove Coulter. Ziggler won after hitting the zigzag in about a four minute match. Cesaro and Zeb were sent backstage after Cesaro pulled Ziggler off the apron into, a, uh, into his upper, uppercut. After the match, Ziggler cuts a quick promo about dumping AJ. He said he should have done it sooner. AJ was watching backstage with Big E and went, and went nuts. She beat up a, uh, a chair and even attacked Big E eventually. He hugged her and then they had a moment. They were about to kiss when Langston pulled away and kissed her on the forehead instead. And there was a non-televised entrance for the Shield. The Usos' microphones didn't work for the entrance. It was really staticky. It was a... Is that a word? Uh, is it now? It is now. Match number two. Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns defeated the Usos. The worst of the Usos never started because Dean Ambrose ran in. Mark Henry made a save to a huge pop. Babyface turn. The Shield retreated back up the stands and set the baby... As Babyface held a, held strong in the ring. Match number three: Daniel Ryan defeated Wade Barrett by with a LaBelle lock. Borg got him lock in five minute match. Unbelievable reaction for Ryan. Very huge pop arena wide. Yes, and Daniel Ryan chance. No need for audio sweetener with this one. And the crowd crowd was great uh, great tonight. Miz TV with Paul Heyman epic non response for Miz's entrance. Great heel Paul, Paul put over Brock Lesnar and offered Punk a piece of advice. Stay down, Paul threatened as if Punk ever showed his face again. He would be victimized by Brock Lesnar, more brilliance from Heyman. Miz was lame as, and then they all left. On his way up the ramp, Heyman interrupted Miz, leaving and brought out Curtis Axel. He and Miz exchanged looks, uh, looks but passed each other on stage. So we get... Curtis Axel with Paul Heyman pinning Chris Jericho in about a 10 minute match to retain the Intercontinental title. Decent back and forth match uh, that Axel won with his hangman finish, uh, face buster. The crowd went bonkers for Jericho's offense. The pop on the wall being applied won't be sweetened. Unreal. There seemed to be a no connection between Axel and the crowd post match. Ryback came to the ring and hit Jericho with the meat hook and shell shot. Damian Sandow came to the ring. He said he didn't screw Cody. So he couldn't understand why Cody attacked him Monday. However, he wasn't going to spew angry rhetoric at, at Cody. Because that's what makes him different from us. He said he and Cody were still best friends. And he invited Cody to join him in the ring. Cody entered and said Sandow said he, for, he forgave Cody. He offered Cody a metaphorical olive branch. In the form of the offer to be the guardian of the case. Cody, you earned this, Sandow said. Cody then attacked Sandow, but Sandow quickly escaped and ran to the back. Unimpressive reactions for Cody. RVD beat up uh, Darren Young with Titus O'Neil. RVD won with Five Star Splash in about a five minute match. A showcase match for RVD, who used all of the standard spots. Backstage segment with uh, new general manager Vicky Piggy Guerrero had security removed Teddy Long from the building. A brief graphic hype the, that Big Show would be making his return to Raw this Monday. And your main event, Randy Orton pinning Del Rio in a non-title match. Orton went for the clean 
went over clean after an RKO in about 10 minutes. What you expect from, from these two, I still don't like how frequently champions lose non-title matches. And that was the end of the SmackDown. The match, in the dark match main event, Daniel Bryan, Rob Van Dam, and Randy Orton defeated the Shield in a six-man tag. The Babyface uh, trio went over in about seven minutes when Rollins tapped out to the Borgasm lock. Report number two for May, WWE main event. Krista defeated Fandango. Layla and Natalya defeated Alicia Fox and Akbala. Jessica Gabriel versus Heath Slater ended in a no contest when the Wyatt family attacked after the beat down Bray Wyatt cut a promo. And number two for... SmackDown, Teddy Long opened the SmackDown and said Vince McMahon will be giving him a job evaluation later on tonight. Teddy could become the permanent general GM of SmackDown, Booker T's music hit, and out he comes. Booker thanks Teddy, but says he's keeping his job. Vince comes out and talks about the job. Teddy makes Chris Jericho versus Curtis Axel for the Intercontinental title. And Booker makes Abro Del Rio versus Randy Orton. Brad Maddox comes out and gets his two cents in, said he's already booked those matches and had something even better, Rob Van Dam. Vince pulls a fast one and says, Vicky Guerrero is the new SmackDown general manager, out, he, out she comes to a huge heat. Vicky rips everyone for not supporting her, her, her uh, firing on Raw. Dolph Ziggler beat, beat Jack Swagger with a zigzag. Referee sent uh, Zeb Coulter and Antonio Cesaro to the back after Cesaro interfered. Ziggler cut the promo after the match and said he would have, he should have uh, dumped AJ a long time ago. And then we see AJ and Big E Langston watching her backstage. She flipped out. Attack Big E. He calmed her down and they hugged. They go to kiss, but Big E stops and kisses her on the forehead instead. The Usos versus Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns was up next. The match never started as Dean Ambrose ran down. Mark Henry made the save for the Usos and the crowd went nuts for him. The shield escaped through the crowd, and they should have made a went ahead and made the six man tag for, for that uh, to be on the program. In my opinion, uh, Daniel Bryan beat Wade Barrett by submission. Bryan came out to a massive pop. I don't think that match was uh, even noticed in the previous one. That's why I always get at least two reports. Miss TV with Paul Heyman was up next. Uh, Heyman praised Brock Lesnar and t told CM Punk to just give up. Heyman then threatened another, another attack from Lesnar and Miz cracked jokes to end the segment. Curtis Axel defeated Chris Jericho after the match. Ryback came out and nailed Jericho with the meat hook and shell shot. Damian Sandow came out and told, talked to Cody about attacking him on Raw. He says that they're still best friends and tag team partners and Cody, uh, he called Cody out. Sando offered to forgive Cody and let bygones be bygones and let him be the the guardian of his Money in the Bank briefcase. Cody didn't accept and attacked uh, Sando and escaped from the ring and headed to the, to the back. Next up, while Van Dam defeated Darren Young, we Miss Pinky Guerrero and Heather Security escort Teddy Long out of the arena. And then they announced Big Show would be returning on Raw. And Randy Orton in the main event defeated Alberto Del Rio in a non-title match. Orton won with a clean RKO. Smackdown ended with Orton celebrating. And I have yet to get the Dark Match main event results for Smackdown. I think it was advertised as the, the Shield in that six-man tag that I was talking about earlier. But I haven't got any results for, for that. Uh, I believe it was on here. Did mention it. Well, anyways, I'm not seeing it, and I do apologize for that. And thanks for viewing. Peace out. Don't forget to call your 1-800 fella if you need any help with anything. Because they'll give you a broke kick in your mouth. And then you'll have, you'll have a full appetite. Anyways, uh, I'll just uh, set that as a uh, joke. Again, peace out. God bless. Thanks for joining.